<laughs> what what are you trying to tell me? Please don't yell. It's okay. God, her voice was incredible. So soft and so husky. A choir of angels in some distant fog. Why? What did I do wrong? Please calm down. Her eyes were astonishing. They were a one-of-a-kind blue-gray, and they could look through any lie, any truth, to the core of things. Why? Is, is it because I'm ugly? It's not that. I mean, we're just friends, okay? I felt my eyes burning with unshed tears. Oh, God, that freckled face. Glossy lips, pale skin. She was ice and steel, carved perfectly into something I wasn't allowed to have. And I didn't know it then. Fuck you! And I ran. I ran as far and as hard as I could go. I hurt everywhere. She took my heart, and she split it in half. I loved her more than anyone I had ever felt for, and I felt so sick and I thought I was going to vomit when she turned me away. Everything hurt, and I couldn't handle the pure pain coursing within my heart. I did the first thing to come to mind, being stupid and still in high school. My heart wasn't going to have any say in what I did now. I ran away. I took all the money I had, and I ran away. I brought a pocket knife and an old umbrella. I went to the closest dollar store and loaded my bag with cheap food and clothing. I bought makeup and some spray and hair dye just so I could get as far away as I could from the person that she couldn't love. I ran as far as my legs could take me, thumb out, ready for anyone. The sky darkened above me, all the stars watching from above. It took an hour or two before I finally got a ride with a trucker. He took me pretty far and I gave him my thanks and went on, with a fiver to help with gas. I got too tired to walk, so I ducked under an overpass. I pulled out my pocket knife and hacked off my long, brown hair. I sprayed my hair a bright red and sucked on a lavender lipstick. I layered on the hot pink blush and dark green eyeshadow until I didn't feel like someone she couldn't love anymore. The feeling lasted half a second before I broke into gross sobs that fucked up my throat for days. And then I kept walking. After seeing the back ends of who knows how many cars and trucks, I learned that I was in the great state of Georgia. So, I kept walking until I came upon a 24-hour diner. I got a cup of coffee. I must have looked like shit because the older gentleman behind the counter asked me where I was staying. I don't remember most of what I said. Probably some sob story made up on the spot. Not the truth, but I was rejected by an angel and was running from myself. I got lucky and worked in that diner and drank enough coffee to scare the shit out of any Starbucks barista. I worked my ass off to earn a nice hunk of money. The diner was also where I met Pat. Pat had short, spiked blue hair and a pierced nose. She liked my hack job of a haircut, and on occasion I liked to play with her hair. She made me move in with her when she found out that I was sleeping in an old flea-ridden motel up the road. Pat dragged me to her bathroom and pierced my eyebrow with a sewing needle. I hadn't slept much. Not since I ran away. And I sort of crashed on her couch. I woke up in her bed with her as my pillow. We were together for two months before I left her. 
I lied and said that I was going in for a double shift. Cleaned out my bank account. I took a Greyhound bus as far as one could take me. And that was it. Pat was a good girl. But she wasn't her. After a while, I met an older woman named Carol. She had to be twice my age, if not more. We met from a misunderstanding. She had been looking for a working girl, but she found me instead. I wasn't a partner as much as I was a pet project. Carol wore dress suits and all sorts of fancy shit. She said we had the same nose, which was a good thing in her book. I looked like a niece that she didn't actually have, instead of the partner she wasn't ready to deal with. Carol was some sort of businesswoman with a six-digit paycheck. Makeup sales, I think. It was a while ago, and I don't really give a shit now. She bought me a long-lasting dye job and a few wicked eyebrow studs. She was home on the weekends and left me in charge of her apartment when she was on business trips. She treated me like a ten-year-old or a puppy. The woman had issues with you, with all her Botox and exercise. We had three months before I grabbed the stud she bought me and fucking bolted. She was crazy, really. She didn't want anyone to know I was there. Carol was powerful, but she wasn't her. So, I was off again, and I wound up in a town that looked like it had been dominated by goths, emos, and people who complained that they don't want to live anymore, but don't do anything about it. I stumbled into a tattoo and piercings parlor, and sold all of the studs I had for a sum of $12,000. And that was where I met Nova, who was the one who reported that they were some high-quality diamonds. Nova was a male-to-female transsexual who had a few too many piercings. She loved heavy metal and gave me snake bites and a cheap brow stud to keep the hole from closing up. We had about four months together before I left. Nova was a trip, but she wasn't her. I took a Greyhound bus to Pennsylvania, where I met Paul. Paul was a mistake. We had a month or so before it ended, and it ended when he had too much beer and gave me a black eye. So I shattered a chair over him and kept swinging until he was out cold. Then I stole his wallet and cleaned his bank account because the fucker couldn't hide his info to save his life. He's either scared that I would report him for hitting me, or he was dead, and either way, I didn't give a shit. I will say that I walked away with more cash than I'd ever seen in my life. Paul was a dick, so he wasn't her. Well... A train ride later found me in Connecticut, where I dropped by a Thai restaurant, where I met Lo. She was the head hostess and was the tiniest little thing. I'd, I'd never have guessed she was a lesbian, let alone the one calling the shots. I used to braid her hair when she wasn't busy. She was a true sweetheart and a total beast in bed. She was the owner's daughter. And he was none the wiser about me and her. I'd just order sushi and hang out until she got off work. Meaning, whenever she felt like a romp in the bedroom. We were about eight months into it, before she took her dad's job and had no more time for me. So I did what I had always done. Picked up, and I left. Lo was awesome. But she still wasn't her. And then, after a few days of walking, 
I wobbled into a bar where I met Candace. And then I met Jackie. And then Mabel. And then Sarah. And then Tara. And then Aries. And then Bo. And then Maggie. And then Helen. And then Ruby. And then Havana. And then the Smoker. And then the Goth. And then the Pervert. And then the Crossdresser. And then... I stopped caring. I couldn't care anymore. No matter who I was with, they were never her. I couldn't move on. I was only a teenager when I had my heart broken. But I wasn't able. I wasn't capable of moving on with my life. I had been trying for years, but nothing. No one worked to fill that fucking void. She was perfect. I was in love with her. We were perfect for one another, but something wasn't right. After all that time away, and looking for someone to fill the void, I grew to violent thoughts about her. I wanted to beat her to death and take my own life after I took hers. I wanted her to be mine, and I wanted to keep her safe. I wanted to stab her in the fucking throat, and I wanted to plant nips and lipstick across it like a painting, but I didn't know what I wanted anymore. But I knew it all revolved around her like it always had. I also knew that I had money, so I moved to Maine. I had always loved it there, and it had been seven years since I left that place behind, since I left her behind, left the old me to die under a bridge, tried to leave her back where she was, in the park. The house was old as hell, which was how I managed to afford it. There were dry, rotted railings here and there, along with a couple of crappy floorboards that squeaked. There was a raised garden that I tried to put work into. I painted here, nailed there, glued this, and fixed that. But the house still felt empty and cold, no matter what I did. I gave up halfway into working on my garden. Tomatoes rotted and withered, and a rusted set of hedge clippers pointing to the sky to become some forgotten tool. Seven years of hollowness and anger changes people. I'd kept the hair I'd done on my own. I dyed my hair to be bright red, now liking the look a bit more than I had in the beginning. I kept my name, listed my address but not my number. I didn't want phone calls. No one was going to come for me, not after all of that time. My dad didn't give a shit, he didn't want a fucking lesbian for a daughter. I had nothing back home to go to. I was free, save for the pain that I always woke up to in the mornings. No one could be looking for me now. But I was wrong. One kept looking. I found her on my doorstep. Freckles and gray eyes and soft words and I... I turned away. What the hell do you want? I can't believe I found you. I didn't tell her to leave. She sighed at me, feet near silent, and voice getting louder. Great, now get out. All I wanted to do was hold her to me like I had wanted since I was seventeen and hoping. She was silent for five, ten, fifteen seconds. I heard her breathing to calm herself down. Why did you leave? Are you stupid? I wanted to shatter her skull. I walked up the stairs to the second floor, and she still follows me, not understanding. God damn it, why is she so thick? Why is she so fucking persistent and beautiful and forbidden and stupid and fuck? Fuck! It was high school. It killed me! 
I wanted to strike her, hold her, beat her, kiss her. I can't think because of her. She's breaking my heart all over again. Her mouth opened and shut like a fish losing its life force on the shore. I... Please, just listen. I... I didn't... Get out, 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 get out. It became a mantra as I blocked out her every word and plea, but she kept fucking talking. I didn't know that you would run away like that. Me either, but look where I landed! A big house by a shitty river about 50 yards from a set of train tracks. A 40-hour work week and a job I barely tried with. An empty house and a fucked up head and a broken heart to make it all feel like a huge fucking mistake. This wasn't my fault. It was her fault. She did this to me. She made me run away. I run out to the second deck, the one around the top floor, and I climb up to the widow's walk and I turn on her so hard she nearly falls down the steps, and my throat is shredding as I scream at her, and I can't stop screaming. Everything I did was to get away from you! You never loved me! Tears streaked my face, and the dim lights above showed that she was crying too. It fucking infuriated me. She didn't have the life I had. She didn't have her heart broken like mine. So where the hell did she get off crying? My back met the railing facing the water. I don't know what I screamed at her then, but I got frantic. She was covering her mouth and weeping. There was a scream. I screamed more than I ever had in my life. I don't know what I said, but she stopped crying and she looked terrified. She was just staring at me, horrified. I wanted her dead. I wanted her to love me. I wanted her to love me back and see me. I wanted her to suffer like she had made me suffer. I wanted her to smile because of me. I want... I want... I leaned back just a little too far on the rotted railing behind me. The world spun on and on until I landed, stars streaking my sight and her horrified face glowing at me on that widow's walk as everything slowed down. I was suddenly in my garden from the widow's walk. I heard and felt a loud crack, and I felt something pierce my back. And I was suddenly aware that those ugly, rusted shears that I had abandoned were going right through me. I don't know what was punctured, but I do know I could see one of the blade tips sticking above my hip, the other one sticking out just below my ribs. There was a wetness spreading over my back and body. I can see her running down to me, but I don't look at her anymore. I just stare at the stars. Those beautiful celestial beings stare back at me with sad, twinkling eyes. They aren't the only ones with sad eyes, but I'm... I'm calm. Even though I'm dying here in the grass, with the woman I had always wanted, had always loved, running to me, and I know that I'm going to die here. I'm sure that I broke my back. It's getting cold. It's getting dark. And I can feel the blood pumping out of me. It's surprisingly hot against my skin. I can see her kneeling next to me. She's crying, babbling about how she'll call for help. And that I'll be okay. It'll be okay. She I grabs my hand in her two smaller ones. No, it's gonna be okay. And they feel colder than ice. She squeezes, but I don't squeeze back. My vision is fading fast. The stars winking out, one by one, as I lose my vision. I know that there won't be a light at the end of any stupid tunnel, or any flames to swallow me up. 
I look her in the eyes, those beautiful gray blue eyes, and I finally know what to say after all that has happened in these seven years. I see her, pale and beautiful, and I finally know how I feel about this woman that I have tried to forget for the last seven years of my fucked up life. The edges of her start to fade like a mirage in the desert, still crying and clutching hard at my hand. After all of this, with my last few moments, I tell her what I didn't know until right now. I hate you.